Hello, I'm Anna, an investment manager with Aula Ventures. This video is part of the new Aula Ventures video series um, covering fundraising basics and some of the key things to consider when thinking about raising money for your business. I will be taking you through the ins and the outs of the fundraising process. For more information about legal, structuring a deal and contracts, Chris, our head of legal, has created a couple of videos about that. See them in the description below. So a quick disclaimer before we start, the information in this video does not constitute legal advice and it should not be relied upon as such. It is solely for informational purposes. Please see the link to the full disclaimer below um, for more information. So okay, now let's get started. So what is fundraising? Well, at the simplest, fundraising involves a business raising capital um, to fund the development of products and or services. So in other words, it is a sales process, um, but instead of, instead of selling physical goods or services, you're selling a piece of your company. So where do we start? It is a complicated process, um, but we always start like we start every other fundraising process by setting up our tools. Our goal is to get one to three investors to wire you the cash. Unfortunately, the process takes a while. Treated like enterprise sales with proper pipeline building, prospect courting, closing and key account management. The key account management here is referred to as investor relations. So the most important question when we actually fundraising is always how much to raise. The general formula for a pre-product and a pre-revenue startup is normally 18 months of runway, which constitutes of the number of hires you need, including any new hires and any existing staff, uh, multiplied by the salary they're commanding, multiplied by 18 months. For some companies, this will mean a few million dollars. For others, it may get into a couple hundred thousand. Every business is different and has different needs. People tend to underestimate that figure. So the rule of thumb is whatever you think you may need, just double it or triple it, as long as you can justify it in your budgets and you can spend it productively on growth. So don't go um, absolutely crazy with big tech salary matching. This is what your equity is for. Um, and don't go crazy on the flamboyant perks. You don't need them at such an early level. So let's look deeper into the tools you actually need. So as mentioned, fundraising is a sales process. So your tools will actually overlap quite significantly with your favorite sales tools. So the one thing you absolutely need is a CRM system. You don't need a fancy Salesforce or a full, full functionality HubSpot that are just going to rake up your bill at the end of the month. Some people build these in a simple Excel spreadsheets, um, but at about 50 conversations, things start to get messy. Um, unless your Excel discipline is absolutely top notch, I normally suggest using basic HubSpot as a start. Um, the basic HubSpot is free and has just about enough functionality for you to run your, fund your initial fundraising process. Normally, all of my portfolio companies are pre-revenue, meaning they haven't really started their fundraisers yet or their sales processes yet. So the CRMs are really very basic. If you already have sales infrastructure in place, you can always run a more advanced process with workflow automations around your investor outreach, timing your marketing campaigns and so on. But we don't necessarily need this in the very beginning. You should always stick to the rule where you choose, you only choose the tools you can actually stick to on an individual, on a team level, and as well as on an organizational level. So another thing to consider when you're fundraising is the timing. Timing is crucial. So you don't want to catch your client at a bad time. You don't want to hit them up in a very low season when you want to make that final sale. It is the same thing with the investors. The holidays are local to investors, the so-called skiing week in February, the peak summer holidays or end of quarters 
would normally be terrible timing for you unless you're out there on the beach or on the skiing slope with them. Avoid it if you can. Do fundraise around milestones. If you're at the end of a quarter or in the middle of a contract negotiation, um, your investor prospects would wait to see the results before you're closing the deal. Try to plan your reach outs based on the probability of hitting them when possible. That means um, you should definitely um, be confident about closing these contracts and having a very strong quarter before you actually um, reach out. You heard the thing, the mantra, always be selling. Well, the same thing applies to fundraising. So that's why a lot of investors preach that founders should always be fundraising. When and while you can't be in a fundraising mode all the time, just because it's tiring and time consum consuming, you should always make sure you plant the seeds before you need the cash with a couple of main people um, that you really want for your company. In the next video, I will take you through the investors you need. So we'll be posting on a regular basis. It is a whole series. So please subscribe um, down below and let us know in the comment section what you'd like to see next. Thank you.